conditions of the validity of the salah. The scholar stated a number of obligatory conditions which, if fulfilled, makes the Muslim's salah or prayer correct. The first one is that the person has to be pure from any minor ritual impurity, which is achieved by performing ablution. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Allah will not accept the prayer of any one of you when he becomes impure until he performs ablution. And, of course, one has to be pure from any major ritual impurity, which is achieved by bathing, due to the saying of Allah the Most High. If you are in a state of janabah, that is after a sexual discharge, then purify yourselves, that is, bathe your whole body. Whoever remembers that he is impure or becomes impure while performing salah, it is incumbent on him to leave the salah to perform purification without any taslim. This is because the prayer has been invalidated and was not completed as taslim only signifies the completion of all the parts of the salah, that is, for somebody who is not in a state of ritual impurity. Whoever prays while filth is on him, either knowingly or out of forgetfulness, his prayer is valid. But whoever sees filth on any of his shoes while in salah, it is compulsory for him to remove it. But he should continue his prayer, building upon that which he had previously prayed. This is in accordance with what has been authentically reported concerning the Prophet. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. As he, peace be upon him, was praying, and he removed his shoes while in the prayer. So the people behind him also removed their shoes. When he finished the prayer, he said, Why did you remove your shoes? They said, O Messenger of Allah, we saw you removing your shoes, and that was why we removed ours. Upon that, the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Verily, Jibreel came to me and informed me that the two shoes had filth on them. Thus, whenever any of you comes to the mosque, let him check his shoes. If he sees any filth, let him rub it on the ground and thereafter pray in both of them. Similarly, the person's clothes have to be free of any impurities for the prayer to be correct. This is due to Allah saying, and purify your garments. And the body has to be free of impurities as well, due to what has been reported concerning the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he, peace be upon him, passed by two graves as he said. The two of them, inmates of the grave, are being punished, but they are not being punished for a great sin, as for this he did not clean himself properly from urine. Another condition is that the place of the salah should also be free of impurities due to the hadith of the Bedouin who urinated inside the mosque. The Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said regarding his urine, leave him, meaning the Bedouin, but pour a large bucket of water over his urine. Concerning this subject, the scholars have noted many useful points, one of them being that he who was able to observe one raka'ah before the time, meaning for the specific prayer, elapsed, has managed to pray the prayer in its time. This is due to the saying of the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. He who fits in one raka'ah from a prayer has caught that prayer. It is compulsory to pay back the missed prayer due to sleeping or forgetting. Very quickly. This is according to another saying of the Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Whoever forgets a prayer should observe it whenever he remembers. There is no expiation for it except that. The entire earth serves as a mosque where the salah is valid. The Prophet, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, and the earth is made as a mosque and cleanser for me. So whenever the time of salah approaches any of my nation, meaning my followers, then he should pray. Exceptions were made of places where there were pronounced prohibitions like prayer at the grave or in the toilet. Due to the saying of the Prophet, the entire earth is a mosque except the grave and the toilet. Furthermore, prohibitions are the watering places of camels. This is due to his, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him saying, do not pray at the watering places of camels. The watering place of camels is the place where it sleeps and rests. 
Another condition needed to make the salah correct is that particular parts of one's body must be covered during the salah. For the men, these parts are from the navel to the knee. And for the females, all her body has to be covered, except the face and the two palms. As well as these rules, the scholars have also stressed that it is compulsory on the person praying to wear what will cover between his arm and neck. The Prophet made the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, None of you should pray in a cloth without anything covering his shoulders. Similarly, the person has to face the direction of the Qibla while praying, which refers to the direction of the Honorable Kaaba or the sanctuary at the Holy Masjid in Mecca. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So turn your faces in the direction of Al-Masjid Al-Haram. And wherever you are, turn your faces in prayer in that direction. Inside the Holy Mosque, it is compulsory for the person who is praying to face the Kaaba. However, for he who is praying far from it, it is sufficient to just face its direction. In view of this, the Prophet may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him said, What is between the East and the West is the Qibla. The Qibla for the one who is offering any voluntary prayer on a ride is the direction which he faces. This is due to the reliably transmitted narration that states, the Messenger of Allah may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him used to praise or offer the voluntary prayers to Allah on his ride in any direction he faced. He also used to observe the witr prayers on it, meaning his ride, but he did not offer the obligatory prayers on it. Due to the forgiving nature of Islam, Islamic jurisdiction states that a person's prayer is accepted as long as he tried to work out the direction of the Qibla. So, if a person cannot work out the direction of the Qibla from any mosque, or by asking the people using a compass or any other similar means, he should therefore base his decision on that which he thinks is the most correct. Allah says, So, keep your duty to Allah and fear Him as much as you can. 